So we have a uh, to show and uh, we have to apply some antiseptic. So here we go. So when we think about infection and the uh, relevant antiseptic, we have to wonder about what kind of infection we have. So as I said, dirty clothes can have high salt content. Uh, and the body is having high carbon dioxide can you know be a favorable growth medium for cephalococcus and streptococcus so these are gram positive bacteria which can be say treated with the right antiseptic which is good enough for gram positive bacteria so there are quite a few options uh, famous ones among them are you know detol which is chloroxylenol and uh, we all know betadine. Betadine is a broad spectrum antiseptic because uh, it can not only treat various bacteria, it can also be effective against virus and uh, fungi. So, the room it appears a bit dark. So, when we are in a dark room and uh, we are straining to see, we can think about our eyesight. We need to find some supplies because we are tired, we are fatigued. And so, regarding eyesight, how does it work? How do we perceive lightness and darkness? So, let's turn on light over here. So, the moment uh, we switch on the light, what happens in the eye is particularly in the retina, we have rods and cone cells in the retina of our eyes, which is going to not only perceive all the various colors, it is also going to adjust to the lightness and the darkness of the situation. So the interesting thing over here is that what happens is, again, we have sodium ions and potassium ions, okay? So the sodium ions, if you remember when we spoke about a nerve membrane, it would, uh, you know, it has to enter the cell so that, you know, there is, excitation right so over here what happens is the sodium cannot enter the cell then the cell gets excited so that is the difference okay let's pick up some bullets for our gun i guess uh, you know next time i do i wouldn't have to fight with the zombies rather i can just shoot them now is that coffee good so uh, we are fatigued, we need to find supplies, we need to find some food as well for us because uh, we need energy. Now in case we are not able to find any food, what happens is the body tries to look inwards for energy being replenished. For that, it depends upon the sympathetic nervous system. All this stress, as I said, is going to activate the sympathetic nervous system and coffee helps because uh, coffee activates the sympathetic nervous system. It does that through a few methods that it is going to increase in, uh, it is going to increase in adenyl cyclase, that is in CAMT, or it is also going to not, uh, it is going to inhibit adenosine receptors. Adenosine is almost any way opposite to that of the sympathetic effect. So looking at, uh, say, a dirty blanket in an abandoned house, which is like filled with dust apart from staphylococcus and streptococcus we can probably think about say cornibacterium diphtheria now that is a bad disease to get because uh, you know it could uh, not only you know uh, cause a uh, swollen throat it can lead to you know difficulty in breathing and uh, apart from ear infection you know uh, breathing difficulty is a big problem Okay, I don't see any way out and there doesn't seem to be any supplies over here, so we have to go down. Looking at uh, that, uh, okay, I'll reload. Okay, let's go down. So, we're going to crawl through mud. That means, you know, we have to think about the wounds that we have to show. Of course, we have bandaged them, but in case some of it is still exposed, the soil can contain not only bacteria, it can contain parasites such as hookworm and roundworm, which, you know, can be pretty bad. It can lead to uh, anemia and it, it, it will suck our blood and some other parasite uh, like uh, roundworm can, you know, uh, not only cause uh, bad cough, it can even lead to you know, uh, neurological effects. Okay. 
Okay, so we have another zombie here. So now we have to use our gun. That means what? We have to depend on our neuromuscular coordination because without that we cannot be aiming and shooting. Am I right? Okay. Let's go forward. So okay. Okay, so blood has splattered on the soil or on which we are going to crawl. Uh, so Apart from parasites, we have to think about the infect of blood that's going to come into contact with our wounds. So, what can we use apart from bandage? We, do we have some kind of a skin protectant? Yes, there is something called as dimethyl polysiloxane or dimethicone, which can, you know, uh, protect our skin uh, 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 from maceration or exfoliation. And I can see blood oozing out over that. Let's try to go on the edge over here so that we don't touch it. Okay, so in order to fight parasites, what do we need? We require at least just a single tablet of albendazole. That would help against hookworm, roundworm. If we get one to three tablets, yes, that will be great to fight. Not only that, even threadworm uh, and tapeworm. So we have to look for medication. Uh, apart from antiseptic, we can think about antibiotics. If we can get that, that would be great as well. All right. Erythromycin would be really great for not only cornibacterium diphtheria, it will also help fight, you know, staphylococcal, streptococcal. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, we have found our first, uh, first aid kit. So first aid kit will generally have antiseptic apart from painkillers and some bandage. So that is very helpful. It's not only about what medication we find, we also have to find it in the right quantities because uh, if we are just going to take a few tablets when we know we are not completed the course, you know, antibiotic course needs to be completed for it to be effective. Okay, what else? I guess oh, I know. Let's read the note. Okay. Not helpful. All right, so we exit. I guess. We are going to that house now. Oh, slipping again. Remember the reflexes. Other stretch, call guide and then reflex. I think you are uh, getting the feel of what we are trying to do over here. So, not only watching me, I think you should uh, also try this act. It will be really great, you know, traveling along, along this journey. If you have a PlayStation, please do try it. You know, as you go, you can correlate and see. If you are able to recall the points that we have discussed so far, great. If you are coming up with different correlations, that is also wonderful. You can jot it down. And if we can discuss, I will be really, really happy. Now, if you don't have a PlayStation, I will put up gameplay videos without my scientific commentary. You can just play it and try and see if you are able to recall whatever we have discussed so far. Because that is what uh, we are trying to do, no? Whether it is staying in our memory. So, let's try it out and see so that uh, it will be helpful. So, what are the topics that we discussed in this part? Antiseptic, in retina we saw rod cells, diphtheria, caffeine, parasites and some anti-helminthics. Also something about painkillers. So let's see if we can answer some questions. So if we have an injury for pain, we can take painkiller. So which we'll consider as you know relatively safe. Is it diclofenac? Is it indomethacin? Is it paracetamol or etirococcin? It is paracetamol. Diclofenac is really good, but it can cause blood clots. Indomethacin can cause gastric irritation, and etirococcin is a selective COX2 inhibitor. But it can also cause blood clot and rise in BP. 
So when we are crawling through mud, we have to think about parasites of the soil. So which will not be seen? Is it Ascaris lumbroides? Is it Ancelostoma deodinate? Is it Strongyloides or Tania solium? Now Tania solium is a tapeworm which we get through eating uncooked pork. Ascaris, Ancelostoma deodinate, and Strongyloides are all soil parasites. So which soil parasite is going to suck our blood and make us anemic? Is it Ascaris lumbroides? Is it Ancelostoma deodinate? Is it Strongyloides or Trichuris trichura? Yes, Ancelostoma deodinate. Each worm can per day suck up to 0.1 ml blood. Imagine that. Now, when we are having skin infection, we apply ointment. So, which is not good for gram positive infection? Is it polymyxin? Is it fusidic acid? Is it mupirocin or bacitracin? It is polymyxin. So, bacitracin, mupirocin, fusidic acid are all good for gram positive infection. And neosporin ointment contains bacitracin and polymyxin. Polymyxin is good for gram negative infection. So, diphtheria, you know, it has a slender rod shape with clubbing on one or both the ends. So, what is this clubbing? Is it a spore? Is it nucleus? Is it granule or is it vesicle? It is a granule, it is highly gram positive and it is metachromatic and it is also called as volatin granules. So if you enjoyed the video so far, kindly do show your support and subscribe to my channel. It will be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.